ceremony will begin momentarily. Please take your seat and ensure your electronic device is silent. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Commander, United States Third Fleet Change of Command Ceremony. The Change of Command Ceremony is a time-honored tradition which formally restates to the officers and sailors of the fleet the continuity of the authority of command. Custom has established that this ceremony be formal and impressive, designed to strengthen that respect for authority which is vital to any military organization. The transfer of, transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability for the fleet will occur when the relieving officer states, I relieve you, sir. And the outgoing officer replies, I stand relieved. In a few moments, the ceremony will begin with the arrival of the official party. 
Full arrival honors for the presiding officer will include a 17 gun salute. Guests may remain seated during the presentation of the award. Guests will be asked to stand and military in uniform shall come to attention during the reading of orders. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, the parading of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Formation commanders, bring the staff to attention. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Rounds complete. Color guard, advance the colors. Oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. 
what stripes and bright stars through the perilous sky for the Retire the colors. Chapter Stolinga will now deliver the invocation. We ask your blessing upon all those gathered here and upon this ceremony filled with custom and tradition, which signal the recognition that strength, cohesion, and combat effectiveness are buttoned by a smooth transfer of authority. Now may we transfer the trust and confidence earned by that the authority and expertise recognized as appropriate. May this ceremony not only demarcate a change of command, but may it also recall to each of us our mission and the mission of Third Fleet to promote peace and to prevail in conflict. And may each of us also be reminded, regardless of rank or role, that all calls to leadership are preceded by a bond of service. May it be so. Amen. Side boys, post. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Military guests, please remain covered. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Scott D. Kahn, Commander, United States Third Fleet. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, well, I'm taking my uh, personal thanks when I give my speech. But I do want to thank everybody that's here today and those who didn't watch the it is a real pleasure, both personally and professionally, for me to introduce today's keynote speaker. He's a combat crew aid with more than 6,000 hours. That's all. Uh, hours in the F-14, the F-18, and the F-15, and over 1,100 million. He's also an exceptional man. Now in his seventh command, that included the invading 195. Thanks so much. Can you hear me, please? Okay, great. 
uh, you know, it's a huge honor to be here. Uh, it was a supreme test of uh, officer-like qualities to suppress a smile for the horns that accompany the 17 gun salute. And uh, I hope that the I hope the great citizens of uh, Point Loma uh, appreciate that it's a solid, solid game. Uh, I, you know, I really appreciate and am unexpectedly surprised by all of the very dear friends, and mentors, coaches, uh, many of whom I have not seen in a long time, and uh, all of whom I really hold in my heart over the years that are here in the crowd, and you know who we are. I've got all the labor uh, the time to say it all, but I am absolutely delighted and honored uh, to, to see you. And, uh, I, and you know, every military briefing begins with a sit rep, and so uh, here's the situation right now. As I utter these words, in promotion of what you heard uh, Chaplain say, uh, for a free and open Indo-Pacific, as I utter these words, there are 30 ships, 12 submarines, and hundreds, hundreds of Navy aircraft ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific promoting the peace and being in the uh, in the very astute prayer the chaplain offered at this very moment made possible made possible uh, by these sailors and marines that you see here arrayed before you at this iconic command united states third Fleet. and uh scott todd's picture appears among Admiral Halsey, among Admiral Gravely, among many, many, uh, many, many of the leaders that came before us. And who are represented by the sailors and by the Marines who you see here, uh, here in rent. And it is a fighting, a fighting fleet. What does a fleet do? The first thing a numbered fleet does, it holds a battle space and achieves effects within that battle space. And this particular fleet, uh, as iconic as it is, has not only the responsibility of uh, defending the United States, of being a ready, combat, deployable fleet to prevail in conflict, but it also makes ready the preponderance of naval force of the United States of America uh, to be employed against those who would upend the international rules-based order. When we talk about what the international rules-based order, that sounds like a lofty phrase. You know, what is it? And the international rules-based order is that which has lifted two billion people in the world out of poverty over the last 25 years. Uh, the world economy has doubled in the last 25 years. Maritime traffic has quadrupled over that period of time. The elements of the international rules-based order is number one, you don't change your borders using force alone. You can use democratic processes, but you don't, you don't change your borders using force alone. And the United States of America and the community of free nations are all aligned and allied to uphold that order. Freedom of navigation, freedom of the seas, the prohibition against use of weapons of mass destruction, all of these are, are the cause of good that the chaplain so eloquently cited in her, uh, in her prayer. And uh, while we're at it, too, uh, may I please come in uh, one of the best versions of the National Anthem I ever heard uh, as well. And it's this staff, these sailors and Marines, that make that go every single day. And uh, the operations have been countless. They have secured the homeland, secured the battle space. They've interdicted the flow of illegal drugs into our nation. They have made forces ready to go forward and to uphold the international rules-based order in the AOR and in the seas that contain four of the five great threats to our nation and a case to be made in the Indian Ocean for the fifth. And this is the place that makes it go 
fear of the people that you see around the around you. Uh, but they would not do so without uh, a steady hand of the tiller and the vision of the leader. Uh, the first photo on that wall that you see out there is that old bull Paul who's hit hard, hit fast, and hit often. Uh, his, his motto <coughs> is one that is exemplified in the fighting spirit of the people here on the staff and has been led by this guy right here, my dear friend, my brother, uh, Scott Tom. You know, uh, we go back a long, long way and uh, you know, we grew up about 50 miles uh, from each other uh, and, uh, and uh, he has been a friend and mentor to me for all those years. Now, like the ancient Greeks had this term, like kind, described to describe something. You know, a person who is like conic is a person of very few words. Uh, but when they uttered those words, you know, they were absolutely powerful. And you know, I've had the, I've had the honor of serving with, with uh, Scott. It's always hard for me to call you Satan. <laughs> you know, it's always been. Typical, like, oh, you know, how do you say, how do you do it, Scott? Let's see. But uh, you served with him a lot of time, too. Uh, you know, he'll give a brief happy. Great sheet. All right, say it's great. Mike Connick is a person of very good work. And, uh, you know, it, it, presents, it presents as something that's funny. But it's a gift that he has. And you know, that gift uh, first comes from an absolutely incisive intellect. This is absolutely one of the very top five smartest human beings whom I have ever met. Uh, and that intellect, accompanied with his work ethic, is also accompanied by a deep grounded and rooted humility. And his great gift is his ability to cut through all of the marginalia among mountains and mountains of data and to be able to find those elements that will lead us to exactly the right spot. And then considering He'll phrase this in the written and in the spoken word in absolutely incisive, clear, direct words, orders, statements that takes the complex and finds simplicity on the far end of it. And that is his gift. And, you know, not for nothing, also to uh, Satan started out in the F-14, Webb started out in the F-14, I was in the F-14, I have guilty knowledge, by the way, besides all that stuff. This human being would appear to me, would be I, I may be. Okay. Our quiet days, our quiet days are over, but not recovered. This guy, this guy, you know, he has, uh, he has these tremendous gifts and the heart of a blind and the humility of a saint. Uh, he's not come by that uh, by himself. And so, uh, you know, his other, his uh, counterpart, Terry Cobb, is a saint. Her gifts, a woman of tremendous intellect, humor, grace, elegance, and style and their story, it's a great, it's a great American story. They're from Linux PA, uh, you know, they, I, they met in their teens and, uh, and were married, and, you know, in their teens. They have been married since they were in their teens. They put each other through college uh, with Satan pursuing a career uh, as a naval officer, a fighter pilot, and Terry pursuing a career as an educator and a mother. And they have raised two wonderful children in Adam and Samantha, and they are a great American family. And for all of Scott's uh, laconic qualities, Terry's ebullience and for her care and her love for people 
are just an incredible gift. Anybody that knows or knows that that's not the only exclusive word for Toronto. And, uh, and they are one, and they inspire all of us in their love for each other, their love for their family, and their love for our country. Because the families also serve. You know, chaplains in her prayer talk about the theme of service, and we talked about it a little bit just a, just a, few, just a few minutes ago uh, with Webb and with his family. And uh, what is represented by the sailors and marines that you see here in the nation's most important mission among the nation's most in-demand joint force element, the Navy and Marine Corps, in their service come not just the service of themselves, their intellect, blood, toil, tears, and sweat, but the service of all of the families, whether you are viewing on Facebook, whether you're here in uniform, in civilian attire, everything that you have taught these sailors and Marines, everything that you've taught Scott and Terry, Sam, Adam, everything that you've taught all of these families in Webb, Gina, in Anna, in Tommy, all of that, that's all what service is. We take the strength of what you've taught us and how you've strengthened our character and uh, that, that is what gives us strength in the unforgiving moment. Uh, when, whether we're at three quarters of a mile behind the ship or whether we're here in this office directing America's most important strategic area of responsibility and on a mission where the welfare of the nation and even the world uh, depend. It's an awesome responsibility and for all of the families who are frequently on deck, I say thank you and a brief round of applause for that. <laughs> Scott's adopting uh, the mantle of service yet again, Scott and Terry, and they're moving to Washington to take that intellect and to take that service uh, to, uh, to direct the war fighting capability of the United States Navy. And, uh, and they are making a tremendous sacrifice picking up, driving across the country again. They have been crisscrossing the United States and the world now for 35 years. And uh, on it continues as it takes up that handle. And pick for that absolutely indispensable duty to direct the war fighting capability of the United States Navy and uh, and even to assist in some of the helping to direct the war fighting capability of the United States Marine Corps and and uh, there is no there is no more accomplished there is no more uh, dedicated warrior than to do this than than Scott Bob. But onward now, please. Uh, to probably the only, you know, the happiest human being here on this side. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, bringing, bringing to mind, uh, you know, bringing to mind our, our uh, opening discussion about this iconic, vital, indispensable fleet. Uh, we present uh, my dear friend, Webb Kaler. Again, uh, it's a gathering of eagles, what we have here in this crowd. I see here in this crowd the intellect and the drive that drives this fleet. And, you know, last night I saw the chemistry in action among accountable departments for this intellect kicks with. And now when it joins this gathering of eagles, and he is hand-picked for this duty. You won't find a, a human being who's had more arduous service across every AOR, across every conflict our nation has fought in the last 35 years than Brett Taylor, who's had command of every type of unit that has executed every type of mission in the United States Navy. His, his service in the Navy 
and the service that his mother, father, and sister, and Gina, his, his beloved wife, uh, his children, Tommy and Anna, have brought to bear to strengthen him for this moment. Uh, the command, you know, the command at the squadron level, command of a large gigantic command of an aircraft carrier, carrier strike group, and then some of the most arduous staff duties that you can possibly have. Every moment of his career has taken us to this point here on the vanguard of America's most essential fleet. Owning battle space, defending our shores, projecting power of uh, uh, responsible for the readiness of 60% of the United States Navy. All of these moments have brought Webb to bear for this. Uh, that eye of a needle that I talked about that uh, Satan can fly jet through, uh, Webb is right behind him flying that jet through that same eye of the needle. Webb and I were direct partners as fellow J3s at Unified Combat Command. You will not, you know, you will not find a human being who is uh, smarter, more dedicated, more experienced, more sincere, true sincerity. There, there is not a pessimistic uh, or sarcastic bone in his body. One hundred percent heart and joy to that giant. Control. It is a tremendous honor uh, to be here present at the ascension of the command of, uh, of Red Gallery. To, to Scott and to Terry as a family, I say the most sincere thank you that I could possibly say. Uh, I am so honored to continue to be your teammates. Uh, to the gathering of eagles that has gathered here, I say thank you every single day for your service, no matter what you're wearing service that you've rendered in the past, service that you're rendering now and in the future, and to Webb, and to Gina, to Tom, to Anna, to Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, I want to say thank you very much for your service as we move forward on our shared, very important mission. Thank you very much. Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Service Medal, Gold Star and Louis II Award to Vice Admiral Scott D. Kahn, United States Navy, for services set forth in the following citation. For exceptional meritorious service to the United States and the duty of great responsibility as Commander U.S. Third Fleet from September 2019 through June 2021. Vice Admiral Khan expertly led the largest numbered fleet in meeting operational requirements across the full range of military operation. As Commander Combined Joint Task Forces during Rim of the Pacific 2020, the world's largest multinational maritime exercise, he seamlessly integrated 23 vessels, 36 aircraft, and 5,300 personnel from 10 nations into a cohesive and lethal force while simultaneously strengthening strategic partnerships and international security. The leadership of Third Fleet's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and relationships with federal and state agencies enabled rapid deployment of USNS Mercy to Los Angeles to provide the city additional medical capacity during a critical stage of the crisis. By a superior leadership, wise judgment, and deep devotion to duty, Vice Admiral Khan reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service, signed Honorable Thomas W. Parker, Secretary of the Navy, acting. Yes, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Scott D. Kahn, Commander, of the United States Third Fleet. The first step of the trial is to the First and foremost, uh, thank you, Terry. Your support not only while you've been here at Third Fleet, but through the past 39 years. We have a 39th anniversary last week. And it's 43 years if you start the clock on 4 July 1978 when we met at Liz Cain. Maybe. Well, we have a great 
Adam and Samantha, um, joining us virtually, I hope. Uh, thank you for your support over all the years, and you make me proud each and every day. And I love you both. Starting over to the left, my civil, my civil, my civil, you going to know this. Any operational success achieved by third group was enabled by you and your team. Mel and Sharon, thank you for being part of my friend. Times we shared together have made this for that much more special. As we're out in the Congress and Javon asked the President Commander of the Subpack, if you're up on the net, same words, we made third group up. Operational chief is supply each of you. General General Hutchinson, Hazel, it's been a privilege working with you and your team to generate the deploy naval warfare. That blue green team has provided our biggest force for operationalizing the various warfighting and expeditionary concepts in the Prairie Atmosphere. Michelle, it's great seeing you again. Terry and I very much enjoyed your company at our house. Uh, I think a few months ago, I lost that time. Grab and block my deputy commander. Thanks for carrying some of my load to a deep operational time. I needed your leadership to be the other. Grab as Aiken, Kurt, Welch, Sobek, Marissa, Martin, Sweeney. Thank you for your leadership and the results that each of you have delivered for each other. Grab a bowl of the hand of the region southwest. You and your team also enabled third fleet of schools to execute the project. Sorry. Uh, so thank you. You and your team did some phenomenal work. Well, not only our sailors, but the family. Gina and Tommy, Tommy, welcome to third fleet. Welcome back home. Yeah. Those three jet lags will be dead. Hang in there. Okay. And thank you for supporting your husband and father. Both throughout his career and his new departments. To the change of command action officers here at Third Fleet to put this ceremony together, including Lieutenant Jen Tolentino, uh, Black Sec, and Lieutenant David Gray Willis, one of my DAOs, uh, Naval Base Point Road Commanding Officer. This place went through a, through a pretty quick turn, and it just looks great. Uh, so thank you for, the, for today's ceremony. Third Fleet Honor Guard, the Navy Region Southwest Band, led by MU2 Pedro. And the vocalist, was Emmy John, Johns, who I echo the comments, a very moving national event. Thank you. So, how about a round of applause? I'd also like to take a moment to uh, recognize our personal staff for the dedication of hard work during the last 20 months, many of whom ensured I never had a bad day during the third week. I only had some bad moments. Captain Randy Van Russell, my chief of staff, who maintained a steady hand on the tour during some pretty turbulent times. Uh, Maybe we were My executive assistant and de deputy executive assistant, Commander Dan Brown and Commander AJ Brown, putting all my emails together, keep me on time, and helping me stay ahead of the problem. Um, I am very grateful. Lieutenant Sarah Erickson, my aide, talked about Lieutenant Jim Tolentino, my command master chief. Tom Davis, phenomenal work uh, in helping me have those necessary conversations that I would have. Senior Chief Josh Laskowski, who's not here, is working for Adam Fitcher now. Uh, and Chief Ago, my enlisted aide, and then Wyan Marquis, my flag. And not only did most of the people I mentioned never for sure I never had a bad day, many of them in each of their own unique way made me a better man. In addition to everyone here today, I just want to thank all the guests joining us virtually. Uh, we have representatives from partner nations around the world dial in, dial in. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedules. I'd also like to say hello to my mom, Judy, my brothers and sisters, Kathy, Gretchen, Matt, and Chris, as well as my many friends and mentors joining in, and you know who you are. As I think back when I assumed command in September 2019, I couldn't imagine the global health crisis our world, our nation, and our Navy would experience in the coming months. I'm so proud of the way our sailors and their families have persevered through various restrictions of movement. COVID-19 has work us, employment, having to telework, dealing with closed school, child care development centers. 
trying to raise a family in the big job. All adding stress and strain to your personal and professional life. Please know in overcoming these challenges, they were not lost. And we could not navigate our way throughout the pandemic without the medical expertise and leaders and the men and women by Captain Kubrick. But in my view, Third Fleet Headquarters sailors across the fleet did not simply get through the pandemic, and I'm not standing publicly with the phone, but I think it's starting to get our roots from here. They didn't just get through it, they accepted it by quickly adapting to the environment and staying mission focused. Every deployment, Every deployment was on time. All units going full to forward, trained and certified. No bars were lowered. Period. Someone once said that adversity does not test one come. It reveals it. And if I were to characterize what was revealed to me during these times in the past 20 months, I would use words of resilience, toughness. Ability to adapt professionally work. That is what you showed me. Shifting gears a bit, uh, throughout my 35 plus year career, the very common work life. And all those white suits, of course, we don patch. You know, the top gun patch, the having patch, which is for our Airborne uh, electronic generators. There's a pause patch, which is all about air flow command control, but you see the sea wolf patches, and they're all about learning the And they have new expensive patch. But it's also in our surface gear and the uh, surface and mine war fighting cars. Now they're packing for health. Integrated air missile defense. I have not seen these before. They're pretty cool. Any summer. Amphibious and others. And then your seeds, your seals, a submarine. They all pass it from wherever the uniform would be given to that. It's most important and others. What are they representing? What are they doing? What are they symbol? I think they represent that the warfighter learned as an expert acquisition. They have honed the profession of art. The individuals, those individuals are humble, approachable, and credible. And that they have a warfighting edge, a never quit attitude on the warfighting spirit. But let me be clear, we don't have to wear a hat to be a warfighter war war. It's not for us. And as I said, our various ships, submarines, squadrons, and wings also have patches. But what does this patch do? The third fleet patch. To me, it represents a warfighter as part of the headquarters that deters potential adversaries, assures our allies and partners that we will stand with them in times of crisis, to support and protect the free and open in the Pacific region, to promote security, and to respond to contingencies for crisis side by side. This warfighter that wears this patch is prepared, if required, to fight and by God like that. that is the expectation. And I am so honored to have been here, to have had the privilege to command and serve with each and every one of those things every day. And I'd like to give some brief examples of how Third Fleet has deterred, assured, and ready to win. And our first job is to prevent them. That is what deterrence is all about. The fleets across the globe deter our adversaries through their very presence, through various exercises, war games, experiments that we allow people to do publicly. And over the past 20 months, Third Fleet has worked hand in glove with CSG-15, surface pack, air pack, one map, and sub pack, trained and certified deployed 
three carrier strike groups and two amphibious ready groups, 19 submarines, 26 independent deployers, and numerous expeditionary wings and squadrons. Some specifics. Between the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group and the Macon Island Amphibious Ready Group embarked with the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit, who both returned from the deployment a couple weeks ago, those sailors and Marines steamed, flew, and went ashore, in some cases, in 5th, 6th, and 7th year. And they had all completed their mission, rendezvousing off the coast of Alaska to participate in Northern Edge with our Air Force brothers and sisters. And in doing so, they ensured our Navy and Marine Corps is better prepared than possible to meet, to meet the demands of a rapidly developing blue Arctic and a growing competition space, and as well as our ability to operate out of a steel location. During the unmanned integrated battle, which was a couple months ago, our fleet operationally paired manned and unmanned systems together in challenging maritime scenarios. Led by Rear Admiral Jamaica, this exercise demonstrated that unmanned capabilities can, are, and will be incorporated into day to day fleet operation above the sea, on the sea, and below the sea. The Third Fleet's Requirement Experimentation Chief, Chief of Staff, Commander Brian Davis, and Action Officer. Lieutenant Commander John Buss. This will be a step to the next. Congratulations. But then, with the help, they allowed our sailors to maximize multi domain integration while teasing out the interdependent relationships across the fleet to employ these developing capabilities against a high end atmosphere, reducing risk and by increasing our operational reach by sensing our environment delivering offensive fire for the greater and greater distance. Our third fleet sailors use this exercise to actively incorporate new technology to first identify and then create those more fighting advantages to apply to the most difficult operational facility. And while at the same time, operationalized chief naval operations, unmade campaign. This is about fighting. Last year, our fleet and nine other like-minded nations, including Australia, Brunei, Canada, France, Japan, probably the Korea, Philippines, Singapore, plan, coordinate, and execute the first accidentally limited Pacific exercise. We could have canceled the exercise. COVID-19 was taking hold in the U.S. and across the world. We could have told our allies able to see it in 2020. 20, excuse me. Instead, those partner nations took the initiative to replan an exercise that usually takes two years, and we did it in Our team here, led by Captain Jay Stungel and our international partners, adapted, remained flexible, replanned, rescoped, and then safely executed the remote facilities. Alongside our partner nations, we demonstrated to the world that like minded nations committed to a free and open in the Pacific region can come together. The one important attribute to these types of exercise in times of conflict, we can surge capability. We cannot surge close. That is a day to day thing. I could talk longer about how the men and women standing behind you. With over 68,000 sailors and Marines that live from Seattle to San Diego to Hawaii. How they all sell in the past 20 months. But I'm going to stop there. The bottom line our warfighters have proved themselves in credible combat force, deploying worldwide, deterring adversaries, assuring our allies, and we're prepared to fight at the end. But to be perfectly clear, what you did, what we did, was exactly what our nation and our Navy needed us to do. When we needed to do it, where we needed to do it, and how it needed to be done. So thank you. Well, as Matt Caparo has mentioned, even rather hard. But I have for the past five years with the one. I know you're glad to be here home and say to you, your friends and your family. 
and you're eager for me to say, I stand with you. <laughs> Congratulations on your well of promotion. And I don't say the same as flippantly. And you're the right leader at the right time to take third fleet to the next level. I always say individuals and organizations are either getting better or getting worse. They're never staying the same. And this demand to continue to get better to thrive for the leaders. Well, it's an honor that I turn over this command to you today. I will now read my own. Will the guests please rise? From the Chief of Naval Operations, Washington, D.C. subject, CNO Order 1331. When directed, detach from Commander Third Fleet and report as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations and War Fighting Requirements of the Commander, call down my flag. I have to. Staff Duty Officer, call down the Fleet Commander's flag. Aye, aye, sir. Call down the Fleet Commander's flag. Chief of Staff, Fleet Commander Flag has been hauled out. Very well. Admiral, the flag has been hauled out. Very well. As is customary, the Command Master Chief will now present the outgoing Fleet Commander with a game. Washington, D.C. Subject CNO Order 1201. When directed by reporting senior detachment duty as Deputy Commander U.S. Pacific Fleet and report to Commander U.S. Third Fleet. Break the fleet commander's flag. Aye, aye, sir. Break the fleet commander's flag. Chief of staff, the fleet commander's flag is close up. Very well. I know your flag is close up. Ladies and gentlemen, yes sir, ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Stephen T. Taylor, Commander, United States Third Fleet. Hey, good, good morning, everybody, and uh, it is certainly a pleasure to be back in San Diego, uh, I, along with my family. We are, uh, are humbled uh, and certainly honored to uh, serve as Third Fleet. Uh, I couldn't be more fired up, and I, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I apologize in advance to uh, do some thanking uh, for those people that don't attend these very often, and if they're in virtual land, uh, the reason we all stand on this dais goes to the comments that both uh, Admiral Paparo and uh, Admiral Khan uh, said. And the bottom line is, is that it's a function of all the support we get uh, in an effort to enable us to do the job, uh, serve the Navy, and certainly in my case, uh, for the nation that I love. Uh, specifically, I do want to talk about uh, the entire Third Fleet staff. Admiral Khan went into the details of the people, but uh, uh, there are so many operational things going on uh, right now, and uh, the, the work to do here 
uh, continues. Uh, and nobody ever pays a juggler or, or comes to see a juggler with a juggle one ball. Um, so as I look at the first thing, I thank them for the amount of balls in the air here. But you guys are certainly deserving of, uh, of pay and anticipation. So thank you to all the people standing behind uh, for supporting the change command today while uh, all the operational things are churning. And as I'm looking at the mock team, he's sweating the load because he's, uh, he's now an hour behind uh, of the work he's got to do today. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, the color guard, um, I, I'd be remiss. Uh, it was sharp, it was crisp uh, as the flag of our nation constantly deserves. And I appreciate that. As does the uh, singing of the national anthem. I'll reiterate uh, times three. Um, you know, there's a joke actually with Meredith sitting here. Um, we used to go to a Christmas Eve service, and I never sing at Christmas Eve carols uh, because I hear myself sing, uh, and it's horrible. And um, so it reminded me of that as we, uh, as we heard a beautiful rendition of the uh, symphony. Uh, also, uh, for the band writ large, uh, not just for safety, uh, for, but for all of us, uh, it's a pleasure to have a band at the change of command. Uh, it really does make the ceremony, so uh, guys, gals, thanks, uh, thanks very much. Satan uh, and Terry, thank you very much for the warm welcome. A wonderful evening last night, thank you for that. Um, it's, uh, it's a smooth transition to Point Loma, and I'll invite you back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Admiral Bolfaro, I really do appreciate uh, you making the effort. Uh, in the, the busy time that you have right now, with a whole lot of things, uh, to take the time here to come and preside in the ceremony, allow Satan and I to, uh, to probably hear you. There are a large number of people that are watching virtually, uh, and I appreciate you for taking the time to do that. The invites that I sent out uh, to you specifically were done uh, completely on purpose. Uh, as you've all helped me get here, uh, and help Gina and me continue to serve, so, uh, so thank you very much out there. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that, uh, that I would recognize, but I'm going to say a single one virtually, uh, and that's High School Reynolds, if you know that man. Uh, he was my first skipper, and uh, without, his, without his trust, I certainly uh, wouldn't have anything more than a, uh, than a first tour. Uh, he put a lot of trust in me, and I am, I am grateful for his leadership. Uh, you know, there's some other checkmates out there, uh, Guido, uh, Dice, uh, Trash, Max, uh, anybody uh, I think would recognize that. So uh, high school, if you're listening, uh, thank you very much uh, for that. My family is here, so uh, it's a huge deal. Excuse me. Uh, we're pretty busy right now, and, uh, and I appreciate them all flying in uh, last night uh, to make this happen. Uh, so, so thank you very much. Uh, that's why I started like that. So, so thanks. Uh, we, I certainly couldn't support uh, without, uh, uh, couldn't serve without your love and support. Um, this move here uh, is taking the village. Uh, it has been a, a very quick turn. Uh, we got orders about two and a half weeks ago. And uh, in that light, not that I would think the moving people of, uh, of Hawaii, but they turn, they uh, uh, move on pretty quickly. Uh, but it takes a whole bunch of other things uh, to have that happen. So to my parents, thank you very much for supporting us and getting us here. To my sister uh, and to uh, Luca and Kiara, uh, you know, thanks for picking us up with uh, 11 bags, two dogs, two crates, uh, pulling car and seats out of minivans to get us uh, down here. I, I really appreciate it. Jill and Green are here, huge neighbors uh, for a long time. I'm driving his school sports car, uh, so that's not mine. Thank you for letting me park your car. My other one's coming. I'll, I'll get the uh, uh, hybrid Ford back in. So I'll drive for another couple of days, so thanks very much. Um, to my other family, the Tyrus, uh, thank you for coming. Really, really appreciate it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's other really good friends. My childhood friend Meredith is here, uh, pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, Slammer, uh, good to see you there, buddy. You were chief of staff here uh, long ago, but as Skipper, we got to see on XO together for a long time. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Great to see you on the fourth scene of that. Bolter, my, uh, my new wife, uh, which for those of you who don't, uh, don't know, when, uh, when you go to new school, you spend uh, a lot more time with the guy who sits across the desk from you than you do with your own family. Uh, great to see you, buddy. Uh, Kim, uh, I guess Bagger didn't make it, but, uh, but that's because he's Bagger. Uh, anyway, great to see you and look forward to spending some time with you here in San Diego. Um, Kenny and Mel, thank you for the, uh, uh, the help getting here, uh, the Hendrix and, uh, and all those things. I, I appreciate that. It's nice to check in and, and have a uh, bag of stuff to eat in the, in the cocktail and drink. And that's the same for Pappy Baby. 
Uh, so thank you very much. You, you helped us get here. And, uh, and that's how this whole team works, right? That's how, uh, that's how you, you hang in and thank you. And so I appreciate that. Uh, as a new commander, it's customary to be brief, uh, and, and I will. There's a lot of work to do at Third Fleet today, uh, today specifically, and in the coming weeks, and, uh, and we got to get after it. Uh, real quick, before my remarks, I uh, just a little piece here. It's very nice to be aligned with uh, one, the person you're uh, relieving, uh, and two, with your boss. Uh, if, you know, I uh, wrote these things last night, and uh, I'm glad to stay aligned. I think, I think we're set. It's important to reaffirm <laughs> that we are firmly in a great power competition in the maritime environment, for which we must defer, deter our adversaries from establishing an international order that is not consistent with the rule of law or international norms. The free and open Indo-Pacific that so many of our allies and partners are completely committed to is based on values and standards of what is right in the world and continues to be upheld by the United States. It provides the North Star for which our like-minded partners can rally around. Our competitors are challenging this with all instruments of their national power, but very specifically in the maritime with the military. To deter our adversaries from shaping the environment to their exclusive advantage and the detriment of our allies and partners requires a strong and credible naval force that constantly competes. Providing combat credible and capable naval forces anywhere that Admiral Paparo needs to take the fight forward and win. That is our continued effort to uphold and the driver and everything that Third Fleet does and will do. To do this, our teams must be manned, trained, equipped, rested, and ready. And the Third Fleet Mach must be able to command and control them in all domains from anywhere. Operating well in crisis or conflict takes a bias for action, the continued drive for excellence, and continued vigilance while rapidly transitioning from competition to seize the initiative and hold it. That starts with precise execution and mastery of the basics and is furthered by operationally stretching ourselves as a team of teams. I look forward to working with all the striker commanders that are here today. You all have a fascinating job. It is one of the most favorite jobs I've ever had. You're going to enjoy it, and we're going to work together to uh, continue to take on that power forward. Our success requires strong collaboration across the supporting elements of the Navy. Strong teams with Kenny and Roy and with Jeff Javon uh, out in Hawaii. Teaming with the Marines, I look forward to working with you and General Michael and meet you. Uh, your reputation uh, from every Marine I've ever met uh, is extremely strong and I look forward to meeting you. Seamless integration with the 7th Fleet. That seam is not a seam. It is a fleet dividing line for which there is no line. Strong work with allies and partners and solid coordination with PAC Fleet for the execution of their intent. Doing this is professionally and that's making it extremely hard look easy and routine when it's not. It's achieved through strong leadership, innovation, procedural compliance, sound shared risk management, and relentless rehearsal. Admiral Paparo Third Fleet will continue to build on the warfighting foundation built by many leaders before and strengthened specifically by Satan's work over the last 20 months. I want to thank everyone for coming. We're viewing this ceremony today where we can honor Satan and Terry's relentless and fantastic work to further the first third fleet mission. Admiral Paparo, I look forward to working with you in this urgent endeavor. It's a pleasure to see your success, my friend. And the team is here, ready to get after it. Let's go to work. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Chaplain Stalinga delivers the benediction.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Side boys, post. Side boys, right, ice. Over, mark. Bosun, wipe the side. Pacific Fleet, departing. United States Navy, departing. Third Fleet, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance today. This concludes our change of command ceremony. Staff dismissed.